Hello everybody and welcome to my video on this, the Zeiss Icon Box Tangor 54 half frame. Wait, what? This takes half frame 35 millimeter photos? No. The old original half frame was 645. This takes 645 photos, what we think of today as medium format. Half frame 6x9 is 645. This camera has no light meter a leaf shutter with a single shutter speed of instant and approximately 1 50th, give or take. Box shutters are and box cameras rather are notorious for having kind of in that ballpark shutter speeds. And one interesting feature about this camera is it has both bulb and time. So bulb is where you open up the shutter and you hold the button down and the shutter will be open as long as you hold it. Time is where you lock the bulb open and you have a little lever here on the side which will lock the bulb, the lever in the down position so that you can leave the shutter open overnight, let's say, for a Star Trails photo or a, an overnight waterfall or something like that. And then to turn off time, you just have to unlock it just like this. I'll show you that one more time. That turns off time. The target market for this camera was the entry or hobbyist photographer looking to save some money on film because you could fit 16 photos on this versus a 6x9 which could fit 8. 645 is still quite a large negative and it's very suitable for printing postcards and photos from your travels so even though this has a, a relatively simple lens the negative size does make up for a whole lot of that. This would likely have been targeted at casual photographers who still wanted a quality camera. The build quality on this, by the way, is really quite nice. The 54, 54 2, and 54 15 all used the same manual booklet as they all had the same layout, just in different image formats. So what this indicates is that Zeiss was reducing unit cost by eliminating two manuals for developing, printing, and warehousing and tracking with their inventory. So basically, instead of producing three different manuals and printing three different manuals and having them sorted, they just used one and just put all of the manuals in here. And then the people using it would just read along because the layout of the cameras for the 54, like this one, the two and the 15 were all the same. And the two and the 15 were other formats. I believe they were six by nine and then a different film format. Um, that took even larger postcard sized photos. This was made by Zeiss Icon in Germany, likely Berlin, I couldn't confirm that, and from 1934 to 1939 for this specific model. If you have your Zeiss Icon Box Tangor 54, 542, or 5415, we're going to go over all of the different features on it, starting here on the top. Handle, which often is not present when the on these old cameras but this one has it thankfully viewfinder window for landscape orientation photos and you might be able to see if i do this correctly the studio lights through there so if you hold your viewfinder at about waist level or at least a couple of feet below your eyes you can then use this to sight up your scene to take your photo the camera's front has your two viewfinder windows up here landscape portrait orientation this is your focus. Oh, that's interesting. One to three meters, three meters to infinity. Yes, this is a box camera that has focus and we'll see how that works in a few minutes. This is your aperture selection, F11 or F16. Let me show you a little bit about how this works while I'm thinking of it. So one thing that's, that's I think a fair question and worth asking is, is that aperture selection something that is going to be a sliding aperture. So like, could you set it to something in the middle? No, it's waterhouse stops. So it's 11 or 22. Those are your only controls with the aperture. While we have this light here, I'm gonna show you how the focus works as well. Whoa, what's that? It's not actually moving the lens. It's inserting another lens behind it, a close-up lens, and that shifts the focus point. Yeah, that's kind of neat, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it is. Why is this yellow? It's because I have a press-in filter intended for contrast control. 
this way uh, because single element lenses, especially uncoated lenses like this likely had, are generally low contrast. A contrast enhancing filter was a good way to improve contrast in images. While we have this open, I'm just gonna go ahead and flip this over and show you that focusing lens. There we go. That's close focus, infinity focus. It's really kind of neat how that works. On this side of the camera, we have a number of controls. This is the film advance knob right here that we will use to advance film through the camera. Portrait orientation viewing window. This is your film back release clip right here, which has a handy dandy little pull tab. This is your time and bulb control switch. Shutter button right here. Shutter button lock so that you can't accidentally take a photo like this if you're carrying it around and, and waste your film or if you're in bulb mode so that you can convert to time mode. This side of the camera has a tripod socket. That's a 3 8 16 large format style tripod socket. The camera bottom has a tripod socket, same size. And the camera back has two red windows, which is weird, right? Well, sort of yes, but here's why that it is that way. On 120 paper, you have numbers, okay? And which way are they gonna go? They're gonna go this way. The old 120 paper backing did not have 645 numbers, which is what these are right here, and probably had the 6x6 numbers, but it definitely had the 6x9 numbers. This was the original format for 120. And so the way that this would work, and I'll show you this in a minute when we load film, is you would put the number 1 here, and then the number 1 here, 2, 2, 3, 3, and that would put two frames on each 6x9 negative for a half frame 645 image. We're going to take another look again inside the camera so we can see what all is here. On the top, we have the film take-up spool. So if you are going to use this camera and you, need, you will need to have a film take-up spool in the camera to take up your 120 film. Okay, so if, this, if your camera doesn't have one, you need to get one. To install the 120 spool is pretty easy. Pretty easy. Pry the spring back a little bit, drop the 120 spool in here and just kind of a spin it until it engages with the take up knob and then the spring will clip into place by itself. Film rollers here will help your film move smoothly through the camera. This is your 645 imaging area. And then on the bottom, this is where your film's going to go when you load it and this is the, the new film that's going to be moved through the camera to take your photos. So while we have the camera open, I'm gonna load this with film so you can see how this is going to work. To load film, all you have to do is plunk it into the spring side over here, push it out, drop it into place, and grab your leader. Really quick and smooth mechanism, very easy to use. Pull the leader all the way to the far end of the camera and put it into the take-up spool, which you'll then advance just a little bit here like this. We're going to come back to this end of the camera and we're going to advance until this arrow reaches this corner. This is now a po the point where we want to put the camera back together, lock it in place so that it doesn't accidentally open on us, and now we're going to advance the film until it is in the correct alignment for us to take photos. Should, should start taking up any second. Well, something is not correct because it doesn't look like the uh, paper's moving any. Let's find out what's going on here. Oh, paper is moving. I was just being impatient. Okay, so uh, there we go. You'll see some arrows there in what is the lower red window. And now they're going to move into the upper red window, indicating we're almost to the first number film type indicator right there. And now you can see there's a number one. So there's a couple of little triangles in each of these windows that indicates how, where to put your numbers. One, one, one and one. And now if you line up your numbers, you're going to have properly spaced photos every time you advance. One thing with box cameras and then two and we'll keep going here, you see it two again, right? Two and two. So each number goes to each red window. One thing with box cameras is that the film advance and the shutter mechanism are not linked, so you can advance past film and not 
actually take a photo on it, or you can take multiple frames onto the same part of your film on accident. So one thing to make sure of is that when you use a box camera, you have good film management practices so that you don't waste any of your film. Now, an important thing to bear in mind about film is that it is one and done. It can record light a single time in a controlled manner with a proper-ish shutter speed and aperture to create an image, or in an uncontrolled manner will it, where it records every photon of light reaching it like this. Your film, if you opened up your camera right now, everything outside of the spools would be completely erased and ruined. But I want to show you how film moves through your camera when you use it. And basically, these numbers indicate your different framing, and those were the numbers that we were seeing in those red windows. And as you advance the film advance, the film just moves right through the camera just like that. Really simple, really straightforward, very reliable. So let's pretend that we've gone through an entire roll of film and we're ready to take the film off of the spool. All you have to do is pry this outward, and now you can take your roll of film off, tight, tape it up, put it in your pocket or camera bag, and send it off to the lab to be developed or develop it yourself. After you've removed your film to take, that you've taken all your photos on, you pull this lever, or this spool rather, out of the bottom of the camera, just like this, and now you're going to move it to the top of the camera and basically just do the, just reload it. So there you go, just like that and you're ready to go to load up another roll of film or if you're done shooting for the day to just kind of close it like that and put your camera away. So now that we've seen how to load film, let's talk about how to take a picture with this camera. You've probably figured it out by now. It's super simple, but by box standards, box camera standards also super complicated. What you want to do is a set your focus is are the people that you're taking photos of one to three meters in front of you or three meters to infinity in front of you basically i guess a better way to think about this is are you taking pictures of people or are you taking pictures of a landscape so that's that's what that's for and how much aperture do you want f11 or f22 now the question here is film speed and lighting conditions and also depth of field so just make sure that these two settings are as you want them to be. Now for a, a, an instant photo, make sure that your lock is, is rotated back and you're ready to take your photo. Then trigger your shutter, just like that, super simple. That's an instant photo, just like that. If you wanna take a time photo, pull that out, push the, the shutter button down and put the time lock into place and you can end the photo by pulling it backwards, just like that. Really simple to do, okay? What about double exposures? As we've kind of hinted at and talked about it a little bit, double exposures are super easy. I'm in instant right now. That's a double exposure. If you wanna do a double exposure, you can. Just fire the shutter twice and don't advance your film. What about triple exposures? Quadruple, quintuple, you can keep going on and on until your film literally can't record any more light. So when you do a, a multiple exposure, you're basically going to be throwing yourself at the mercy of the film's tolerance with this camera because you don't have a lot of precise exposure control with it, which can be fun, by the way. So for instance, I'll give you something fun to do if you wanted to do a crazy multiple exposure. Set this to f22. And what you can then do is get the slowest film you can find, like a 25 ISO film or slower if you can, and pull it a stop or two, make it even slower than that. Go into some, some sort of semi-shaded space, and then you can just take all kinds of photos hand holding this of the same subject, and the slight variation in your camera holding will turn that photo into something that looks sort of like it was painted by Monet. It's a really fun technique you can use very easy to accomplish with a camera like this. Just a fun idea to throw out there. Uh, anyway, a couple of tips for using this camera. They're a lot of fun. Box cameras are enjoyable. This is almost as small as they come. 120 film, readily available, 645, great format for uh, developing and digitizing yourself as well. So well made, just don't let it get wet because it will rust. Don't let it, uh, don't, you know, store it carefully so that it doesn't get fungus on it. And, and just generally do, do try to take care of it because it is an old camera. But 
Anyway, this was the Zeiss Icon Box Tangor 54. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in whatever camera manual video comes next.